Welcome to Books in Sum. Here go to for bite-sized book summaries. I'm Okay, You're Okay by Thomas A. Harris. The most important details in this book are that our memories are linked to powerful emotions that are better understood when analyzed. This was first discovered in 1951 by the Montreal brain surgeon Wilder Penfield, who stimulated certain parts of his patient's brains with an electrode. The temporal cortex of the brain is connected to visual memory, language and emotion. And when Penfield touched a certain point on the patient's brain, the patient would make seemingly random statements, such as describing a previous conversation or a popular television commercial. The patient didn't only re-experience the memory, but also felt emotions connected to it. In other words, the patients relived the experience emotionally, not only recalled it. Our own memories are most often triggered by our own emotions. Psychologist Eric Byrne developed transactional analysis, a form of therapy that recognizes three main personality components, the child, parent, and adult. Byrne began to recognize these different personalities around the 1950s when he saw similar patterns in patients he was seeing. The child is the result of experiences collected during our early years. As a helpless child, the parent is memory that relate to the beliefs and behaviors of our parents and other authority figures. And the adult is our rational self with the ability to find a healthy balance between these first two personalities and come up with good solutions and behavior. Burns' patients, such as a mother who was suffering from insomnia, were able to recognize their different personalities when they surface. Early childhood memories can lead to feelings of insecurity and the impression that others are stronger. Evidence from transactional analysis suggests that our emotional reactions regularly cause us to unconsciously relive our earliest childhood experiences, even if we can't remember them. Dreams can also have this effect, as one of the author's patients had a recurring dream that she was a tiny speck of dust in the cosmos, surrounded by huge objects. This dream was likely a remembrance of her mother trying to force her to breastfeed when she was no longer hungry. Experiences like these, from when we were a helpless child, are what contribute to our feelings of being not okay. However, there is little we can do to avoid this, as we move from the safety and security of the womb to the cold outside world where we're cut off from our original source of nourishment. People tend to adhere to old patterns of behavior, but these patterns can be broken. This is because the parent and child parts of our personality are governed by rigid rules that are passed down from generation to generation, and the child is governed by fear of the potential consequences of its actions. For example, imagine being a white man in the 1960s and receiving a request to sign a petition to fight the discriminatory housing laws that helped create urban ghettos. This decision might cause a great deal of anxiety, as the inner parent might carry the racist beliefs of previous generations and lead you to think that you'd be disobeying them by signing the petition. However, people can change and exercise their individuality through their inner adult, who questions our instinctual responses and encourages us to look for new information about a subject. This is the part of us that leads to change and progress, but we first need to get our child and parent under control. To do this, we can learn to recognize our own inner child, adult and parent by understanding the different physical cues that accompany each one. The parent, child and adult are all susceptible to contamination and suppression. The parent will often sigh, use expressions of horror or outrage, click their tongue and cross their arms, while the child will have temper tantrums, rolling of the eyes, pouting lips and a whining tone. The adult face is easier to identify by the absence of the extreme behavior that marks the child and the parent, but that doesn't mean the adult face is dull or neutral. Contamination can lead to prejudice, and the only way to decontaminate is to have the adult understand that it's now safe to disagree and question the opinions of the parent. The psychological games that our inner child can play to gain false confidence and feel better about itself. These games include asserting superiority over others, playing the victim as a way of eliciting sympathy and care, and dismissing every possible solution. These games can lead to feelings of insecurity and fear, and it is important to move beyond these games to arrive at the position of I'm okay, you're okay. Recognizing your own emotional patterns can help you reach a feeling of I'm okay. For example, if you are having trouble making a career choice, you may have been raised with pressure to become a doctor or a lawyer. This can lead to years of following a career path that doesn't bring you any satisfaction, yet your inner child is afraid to disappoint the parent. To break this pattern, the adult must break the pattern of blindly following authority figures and seek their approval in the choices they make. This will allow the child to let go of its fears and turn the responsibility over to the adult, who can then make choices that reflect their individuality. When this happens, the adult is great at assessing situations and making careful decisions that produce positive results. The key message in this book is that everyone comes into the world with the feeling that they are not okay and that other people are okay. 
By discarding old patterns of behavior and making new positive experiences, people can arrive at a new position, I'm okay, you're okay. Actionable advice is to listen to your thoughts, assess how realistic they are, and use the concepts of the parent, child and adult to help you. Gradually, give more space to your adult, who can make a more realistic assessment of your ability than their bearing on your life. We hope you found this summary helpful in your listening journey. If you're interested in diving deeper into the topic or getting your hands on the whole book, be sure to check the description below where we've included links to the book and other related products that may be useful to you. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay updated on our latest book summaries. And feel free to leave a comment with any suggestions or requests for books you'd like us to cover. Thanks again for tuning in and happy listening.